would like for you to, as Bishop Perrins say, do you have a Bible? If you don't have a Bible, raise your hand. Everyone has a Bible. Please turn to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. I'll read from the Amplified Version, and the NIV version is on the screen. Study and do your best. I want to hear you say study, study. And, do your best. and do your best. To present yourself to God approved, a workman tested by trial who has no reason to be ashamed accurately handling and skillfully teaching the word of truth. The NIV says, do your best. Say, do your best, do your best. to present yourself, to, present yourself. To, God to God as one approved. As one. Say, as one approved. As one approved. Say, a worker, a worker who does not need to be ashamed. And who correctly handles the word of truth. Amen. None of us want to be ashamed. Amen. But a lot of people do feel ashamed. I would like you to put up 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. A lot of people do feel ashamed, and we'll find out why as we progress. So 2 Timothy, we started with 2 Timothy 2, 15, and now we're in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13. Does everyone have it? Amen. In the Amplified Version, it says, Until I come, devote yourself to public reading, of scripture to preaching and teaching the sound doctrine of God's word. And in chapter 4 of 1 Timothy, the apostle Paul focused on the walk of a good minister of Jesus Christ. Chapter 4 of 1 Timothy, the apostle Paul's focus was on the walk of a good minister of Jesus Christ. The NIV, the NIV version reads, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of Scripture, to preaching and to teaching. We're going somewhere. We want to look at the definition of the word study. Study is something that must be done by everyone regardless of our age, Regardless of our race, regardless of our gender, we're all faced with studying from youth to adult. And a lot of times people just don't want to study. Can y'all say the word study? study. A lot of people just don't want to do what? Study. But a lot of people need to do what? Study. And so the Greek word for study is spudatso, and it means to use speed. It, it means to make effort, to be prompt or earnest, to give diligence, and to be laborious, to, to work hard. And for those of you that know and those of you that don't know, I'm an educator and have been an educator for over 20 years in conjunction with being a preacher and a teacher. Amen? And one of the hardest things to get through to young people is studying. Amen? And, and so we see this word in the Bible. Study to show 
yourself approved, a workman that needeth not be ashamed. Amen? But then we have young people who are ashamed because they're getting low grades and their parent or guardian is on their case, but they just didn't put in the effort, right? Well, we have to do the same thing as Christians, as ministers of the body of Christ. Amen? When we look at the definition, if you go to the old school dictionary, then you'll find another a definition. We, we went over the definition in the Greek. So we go in the English into the old, old study tool is the dictionary it says here, study is the application of the mind. There we have to apply something that's in our mind. It's our brain and ability to receive something and it's knowledge. It is information. And I used to always hear that information is what? Power. Information is what? Power. Say it again. Information is what? Power. So the application of the mind to the acquisition of knowledge, that's acquiring something. It's something has to be acquired. It's like, it's like if I give you something, you just acquired it, right? But if, if, if I'm not studying I can't acquire it. It can't be received if I'm not putting in the effort to do so. And then it goes on to say, as by reading, as by reading, investigation or reflection. And then the next definition, it says, the cultivation of a particular branch of learning. If you, if you know how to, uh, if you're a gardener, raise your hand. You know how to garden. You got a garden. You all understand about cultivation, right? There's a process that goes into cultivating and planting and producing a, a crop. You got, if you want to produce something, you have to then break up the soil. You have to know what you want to plant. You have to know where the sun is, how much sun is going to be in that area where you're planting it, right? And therefore, you have to know how much time it takes for this particular crop to grow. Then you have to plant it. Is the soil good, right? All of these things, how much water, how much time and attention you have to give to it through watering, right? And so, when it comes to the acquisition and acquiring of knowledge through reading and learning, we, it's a process and it takes work. The word cultivate means to give special attention to something. I want to, uh, if you have ever made the honor roll before, young or old, if you ever made the honor roll before, raise your hand. So those of you that made the honor roll that means that you had to have mostly A's and B's, maybe no C's or one C. Is that right? All right. So I want, I want to do something. So can I have one of, any one of you that made the honor roll, I'd like you to come up front. Anyone that made the honor roll. <laughs> All right. I want you in, like, in one minute, in one minute or less, to tell us all that it took for you to be on the honor roll. Blood, sweat, and tears. <laughs> she said, thank you, blood, sweat, and tears, amen? <laughs> Literally, blood, sweat, and tears. All right, now, uh, in, I, I have a, a married couple. Is there a married couple here? A married couple, a married couple. Been married three, four, five, 10, 15 years. No, no, right here? Okay. Uh, come on up. So, uh, Pastor, I would like for you to tell us how did it get to the point for you to uh, propose to First Lady 
what did it take? Because we're talking about studying. We're talking about time and attention right now. We talked about cultivating something. So, you know, you had to cultivate it in order for you to produce a crop so that she can uh, say, I will. So can you give us in one minute, what did it take? Uh, I would say two things. Uh, one, be intentional. I didn't want to be ashamed and date her under the table. So I was intentional about pursuing. And then authenticity, what did I want to be different about journeying with me? So if you were here that Sunday, you know that I did a video. And so that meant coordinating, putting my thoughts together in a way that was artistic. Um, and then confidentiality, keeping it from her. <laughs> uh, so, but I would say intentionality, being intentional about wanting to be married and then being authentic, uh, not just kind of doing the traditional thing, but giving her something that she would always have to remember. So I made a video. Thank you. First lady, you want to share something? <laughs> um, I think it was almost, I think somebody almost told me that day too. I forget who it was. Yes. <laughs> um, what's the question? <laughs> Um, I would agree the um, intentionality. Um, I think I probably was a person who would probably miss if someone tried to. I pro I would I wouldn't catch it right. You now I always say God, you gotta maybe make their forehead light up or something because I would <laughs> I would miss it. Um, but I just started to see maybe some of the quirky stuff, you know, where it was like, we were like two kids. So like the weird stuff and I couldn't look at him and he couldn't look at me and it was just weird, you know? <laughs> uh, you know, when you're walking in the in the sanctuary and you see, you know, the person try to run and get your door and I think I don't want to him walk me to my car one day. So it was just, yeah, weird. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it was it was weird where you felt like you didn't have any control, like a two-year-old, you know, teenager or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I did, I wanted to bring that in for a reason. And you heard uh, Deja said sweat, blood, and tears, and then Pastor Reed said intentionality, and then First Lady said catching something. Right, and we talk acquire. Let us say acquire. You got to receive. You got to catch something, right? And it takes work. It's sweat, blood, and tears. Intentional. You have to be intentional in what you're trying to learn. And we're talking about studying the Bible for yourself. Studying the Bible for yourself. As we are into the season of recognizing that Jesus Christ died for us and rose again. And he was the gift to the world, amen, and that we should be giving back to God, giving to Jesus Christ and the others. And then we are, then the week after that, we're going into a new what? A new what? Year, a new year. And right, yeah, look at Elder Wanda and say, yeah. So, so, you know, we got to get ready because as we're talking about providing Bibles for people, we are evangelizing new converts. They have to learn how to what? Study the Bible for their what? Themselves. And some adults don't know how to study the Bible for what? Themselves. So God said, teach and preach on studying the Bible for yourself. Because those of us that know how to do it, we have to be able to teach someone else. And someone else have to learn how to do it. Amen? Word approved means something accepted as satisfactory upon being tested. And when we looked at 2 Timothy 2.15, we, we, we saw that in the Amplified Version, it says a workman tested by trial, right? And so that means there are some hardships, there are some 
trials and tribulations, there's some things that are going to happen in our lives that is test, it's a testing us, right? And as a workman, a laborer, an employee, a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we have to be able to still learn and teach regardless of what we're going through in life. Amen? Do you know we're going to go through, as a child, those of us as adults, we can relate to this, and then, therefore, the young people today, our children, our grandchildren, we should be able to help relate to them. Because when we were young and we were in school or we were attending Sunday school or Bible study, right, we had some things we were dealing with personally. Come on now, right? And as an adult, we're still dealing with some stuff personal. There's still some issues that we got to deal with, right? And so regardless of that, he's saying you still have to be a workman. You still have to be a minister of the gospel that's effective, not being ashamed. Amen? So, ashamed. The Greek uh, pronunciation for ashamed is anapacentos. Anapacentos. Not ashamed by implication. Right? When somebody gets, uh, a, a, when someone gets arrested or they get in trouble in a school, right, you either can be implicated you can be identified, you can be accused by an association, right? It says right here, it says uh, ashamed by implication, not reprehensible, deserving of being rebuked, blameworthy, open to criticism. What I like is the word delinquent. It says delinquent, meaning failing because of a neglect of duties and obligations. You see how deep that is? So think about it, students. When students s s skip school, it's called they are delinquent. When they are absent from school, they are juvenile delinquents. Well, how is it when we are skipping studying the Bible? How is it when we are skipping investigating, meditating, and putting in hard work to learn God's word so that we can understand it and be able to teach it to others so that they can acquire a grasp and catch it so that they can be a better workman, not ashamed? How is it that? We can become delinquents. Instead of juvenile delinquents, disciple delinquents. Ministerial delinquents. Evangelical delinquents. We have to really focus on the calling that's on our life and understand and know that we have to be better prepared. And that means we have to study the Bible for ourselves. Amen? So let's go on to here. Another definition for being ashamed is distressed or embarrassed by feelings of guilt, disgrace, suffering for feelings of inferiority, thinking that we're less than. It's a mindset of feeling of less important. Well, the only time that I can remember in my life or times that I can remember in my life that I felt less important than is when I didn't put in hard work. Deisha said, sweat, blood, and tears. When we don't put in the effort and we don't put in the time and, and when we were upstairs uh, as the men were praying, and most of us said we want to give God more time. When we don't put in the hard work, the time, the effort, the intentionality, you got to, it's how intentional are we in becoming studious, 
students of the word of God. So in order to study the Bible for ourselves, we have to know some techniques. And we have to understand that we will be ashamed if we do not cultivate, be intentional, don't put in the time, don't use the tools, don't call the people in our circle that God has put before us because if there's something I don't understand or you don't understand here or on YouTube or the World Wide Web, there's somebody who does. And therefore, we should not be ashamed to simply send a text message, send an instant message, pick up the phone or an email and ask for help. Amen? Amen. Studying is hard work because it requires us to do what? Think. Studying is hard work because it causes us to do what? Think. We have to think. And then we have to be creative in how we think. We can learn almost anything we want to learn if we devote a minimum of, I'm going to say a minimum of 15 minutes. A minimum of 15 minutes per day to read and 15 minutes per day to study. That is a total of only 30 minutes in a day. And that's the minimum. Minimum. I would like uh, the team to put the slide up for six techniques to use. I will share with you six techniques that you and I and on YouTube and the World Wide Web can use. Six techniques. One is to read. And we read in the scripture uh, where it says give time to reading, right? Devote to reading. Number one is read. What everyone must accept and come to uh, the know and regardless of is the fact that reading is fundamental. Run, reading is the foundation to what? Learning. If we're not re willing to put in the effort and devote the time to reading the word of God, Matthew 4.4, 4, Jesus said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out the mouth of God. Amen? So just as food is to our physical bodies, to the nutrients, the vitamins that's needed for our bodies to have fuel and energy, this is how the word of God is to our spiritual man, our spiritual energy inner being. We have to feed our body. And the way to do that is we read the word of God on a regular basis. If you and I are going to learn the Bible, we will have to develop the habit of reading large portions of scripture. Now, it, it's tough to read large portions of scripture. So that's why we talked about a minimum of 15 minutes reading, right? It's like building muscle. When we go in the gym and we never worked out before or we took off a long time from being in the gym, when we start lifting weights again, we have to start off lifting light weights with more reps. And in the first day or two, we're going to have some pain, right? <laughs> we're going to, our muscles are going to hurt. Well, same thing with reading large portions of scripture. So if you start off reading small portions, then you can work your way up to reading large portions. Amen? Number two is, so we need to read daily. And number two, we need to set a regular reading time. So whether it's reading in the morning upon awakening, you have to determine for yourself. Your reading time is set or based on your schedule. So reading could be if you need to wake up an hour early. Same thing with working out. You might have to wake up an hour, two hours early than you normally work, wake, wake up to work out. Same thing with reading the Word of God. And then you can read it again during your lunch break. And then you can read it again, a small portion of the Scripture again, before bedtime. Amen? 
So you have number one is read daily. Number two, set a regular reading time. Number three is set a regular place for reading. Amen? So you should set a regular place, and you should be sitting, not laying down and reclining back because it's very important in how we read and study. So you should have a regular place, and you should have the proper tools. Uh, what's the main tool that we use to, to define a word? The concordance, a dictionary, yes, a thesaurus. So you should have these before you. And as students of the word of God, you can have the strong, the strong concordance of the Bible, right? It will give you uh, the Hebrew and Greek uh, pronunciations and definitions. And it gives you references. Amen? Number four, we should read with a pencil and a pen near us. Why? Should we should be doing what? Taking what? Notes. We should be taking notes. Amen? And the biggest danger to devotional reading is letting our eyes run across the words, assuming that what we have read, we have attained it. The only way you know if you obtained it and received it, acquired it, and caught it is the ability to then you have to then be able to what? You got to recite it. You, you got to be able to show and demonstrate that you have learned it and received it, acquired it, and caught it, right? So have a pen and a pencil near you. N number five, read devotionally. The Bible is a living book which was, was written by a loving God to his children for us, practical learning and application. The scriptures were written to people, and because of human nature hasn't changed, in a year since it was written, we should be getting messages from God as we're reading. Amen? So as we have our pen and pencil before us, we can be asking God, what is it that you're saying to us? What's the message to us? Amen? Devotional reading provides the spiritual inspiration for daily living that every Christian should need. Number six is we should keep a daily spiritual diary or journey. I had to put journey in there because a lot of times most people are turned off from the word diary for whatever reasons their perspectives of a diary are. It might be because normally historically secret things are written in a diary, right? Uh, things that we did wrong, we don't that, that happened to us, we write in a diary. So and then if someone finds it, that that's not supposed to know these things. So, therefore, the negative, negative, negative connotation or the negative perspective is people don't like to write in a diary. So, to eliminate that thought in your head, then use a journal. Either way, we have to notate what God is saying to us, amen, personally. We, in order for us to establish a habit of keeping a daily spiritual diary, we must put in the time and effort, and we must be intentional. However, once a person starts writing down their thoughts from God obtained from reading in their Bible's journal, keeping these diaries or journals will become easy. It will fall in place. Keeping a spiritual diary or journal can help deepen our spiritual life and our relationship with God. So what should we include in our journal? Number one. God's message. So as we're reading and studying the Word of God, we should be asking God to provide us with a message. Number two, there are timeless principles, right? There are commandments, statutes, sayings, and principles in the Word of God. So we should be asking God to show us what are those timeless principles, and we should notate them. The divine insights of, that guide us and help us to program, I say reprogram our not mind because the, the Bible says, be not conformed by the ways of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And the only way we can do that is through the word of God. So I say it's 
here in my notes it says program, but I say we have to deprogram and reprogram ourselves, and therefore we will have the right information and the spiritual inclination that we need. Amen? Amen. Number three is the command to keep. So as we're reading and studying the Word of God, we should be looking for commandments, statutes, sayings. What is it God is saying that we need to obey in our lives? Number four is God's promise. We should look for the promises of God in our reading and study of the Bible. Number five, we should be writing down how we're going to apply these principles and the commandments in our life. Amen? Reasons we should keep a spiritual journal, it provides handy method for recording a special daily insights from reading. It produces an attitude of expectancy, what we expect from God. Number three, it provides a handy check or accountability. Number four, it provides a handy review. Number five, it provides an easy appraisal of our spiritual growth and development. So how to study the Bible for yourselves. Those are some of the techniques and some of the strategies that you can use to study the Bible for yourselves. And I want to thank you so much. And I praise God for being able to share how to study the Bible for yourself. Amen.